What is up guys? My name is Lex. We just finished up a 5, 10, 25 session here at the Hard Rock and you may be wondering why am I speaking to you guys after my session in the beginning of the video? And I'm going to explain a little bit of that right now. So I've been making videos now for over a year and a half, usually two videos per week. And last week I just got a little bit burnt out from all the work. It was a ton of work doing two poker videos a week, playing poker and also trying to live a balanced lifestyle as well. Each one of these videos takes hours to complete. I have to do the intro, I have to come up with a title, the thumbnail, I have to vlog every single hand I play, I have to document every single hand I play, get video, get pictures, do an outro, edit, voiceover, publish, it just is a ton of work. So last week I decided I'm not gonna film the entire week, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a break, and unfortunately, it was the worst week I've ever had in poker since I started four years ago. I've spoken to you guys a couple videos ago about how I was on a downswing and running bad. You guys saw what happened to me in Vegas losing some money and I also had a huge losing day when I got back from Vegas losing around $7,000. I got a little bit back the last couple weeks but last week I lost $10,000 playing poker. It was just insane. I ran bad, I played bad, I got coolered, I got set up and it was an awful week of poker. It really got to me mentally. It was really tough to take. June was one of my first losing months. I lost around $4,000. I then came back here to Florida and I've been grinding basically five days a week here in Florida. In July, I lost $14,000 playing poker. Just insane. The worst month I've ever had by far in my entire life. Actually, before June, I don't think I actually had a losing month since way back in 2018. So I lost 4,000 in June. I then lost 14,000 in July, which makes around an 18 to $20,000 downswing. Now, that doesn't seem like that much money playing 5, 10, 25, but imagine working for two full months, paying bills, rent, car, food, gas, trips, and then losing $20,000. Well, it was pretty tough, it was pretty rough, but it did kind of open up my eyes. It kind of made me start thinking, look, we've got to change things. I gotta get better. I can't become a bad regular player here. I just can't keep losing money. So I really looked at my game. I started thinking, what can I do to improve? What do I have to do to start winning? Now, of course, I was running really bad as well. I got set up, coolered, bad beat, all those kind of things. But I was making a lot of mistakes. Pre-flop, post-flop, I was bluffing maybe a little bit too much, calling way too much as well. So over the last couple of days, I've just tried to relax and tried to really hone in on my skills and try to play better poker and I got a pretty awesome session for you guys. I wasn't planning on filming today because like I said I was going to take a little bit of a break but this session is just too good not to share with you guys. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. The first hand I play is about half an hour into my session. I look down at pocket threes in the cutoff. There's an early position raised to $75 over a $25 straddle. I make the call and we're heads up two jack eight three two hearts flopping bottom set my opponent leads into me for a hundred and ten dollars and this is definitely a board i want to be putting in a raise when he bets on this board he can have some total air balls like ace king king queen or ace queen but he can also have some top pair holding some over pair some flush draws and some straight draws so i bump it up to 275 dollars and without thinking for too long he makes the call Turn card, 10 of hearts, really a pretty bad card. It brings in the flush, also queen nine for a straight, nine seven for a straight, but I actually don't think he's raising those hands from early position in a straddle pot. So when he checks, I'm gonna bet, but I don't wanna go too big. I wanna keep him in there with his jack X holdings, his over pairs. So I bet out $300 and five seconds later, he makes the call again, going to the river here with bottom set, on a pretty interesting board and we see the king of diamonds not my favorite river one because if he has a jack x holding it's going to be a little bit harder for us to get value now because there's an over card to his pair if he does have pocket kings he now made a bigger set than us and now ace queen of hearts gets there for a straight but when he checks i got a bet it was around 1300 plus dollars in the pot so i slide out 450 dollars really just trying to target his hands like pocket queens ace jack king jack and queen jack lucky for us he doesn't raise he just makes the call which means we should be winning this a ton of the time we show our pocket threes and they are good he flashes me a jack and folds and we take down a pretty big one our first hand of the day 
The next hand we play is a doozy. There's an under the gun raise by the same player from the last hand to $60. Under the gun plus one call 60 and I'm in the cutoff with pocket kings. You guys already know this. We're going to be bumping it up. I make it 250 and both of my opponents make the call three ways in a three bet pot with pocket kings and we see a dreadful ace high board, ace queen nine, two hearts. Under the gun, initial raiser checks, under the gun plus one checks, and on an ace high board with pocket kings, I don't really like it, but I still think I can get called by worse hands if I bet here, so I throw out a $260 bet. Only under the gun calls and under the gun plus one folds. We can get called by queen x hands, nine x hands, straight draws, and flush draws with this bet. Turn card 10 of spades, not my favorite card, brings in king jack for a straight, and now queen 10 beats us with two pair. When he checks, I decide to check this one back, going heads up here to the river, which is the four of diamonds, and without thinking for more than five seconds, my opponent slides out a huge bet of $800. Oh, this is pretty nasty, facing an $800 bet on the river on an A-side board holding pocket kings in a three-bet pot. I'm really not sure what I want to do in this situation. My gut is telling me that he's bluffing here, just with the speed that he was betting, and because I don't think he's going to be betting this sizing with that many hands. Let's say he flopped a set of nines on the flop or he had ace queen for two pair. I actually think he'd be putting in a raise with a player behind him. So when he bets this sizing, he's representing hands like king jack for a straight or maybe ace 10 for two pair. The sizing of his bet really matters here. If he did have a hand like ace jack, maybe ace five or ace eight, I do think he would lead out on the river sometimes, but I don't think he would be betting this big. Possibly putting out a bet of 400, maybe 450, but an $800 bet is super big for this game. He's very polarized here to having the nuts or basically nothing at all. I have two kings in my hand, so I block him from having king jack for the straight. I also don't have the king of hearts as well, so that means that he could have a king high flush draw that misses. I go into the tank for over three minutes. I have no idea what I want to do. I've been working on not calling so light on the river and trying to play better poker, but my gut is telling me he's bluffing. So I decide to flick in the call and he tells me good call and he just folds his cards. So without even having to show, we take down a pretty massive pot here with pocket kings. After losing $14,000 last month, things are going pretty good in this session so far and we get pocket queens. Next up here, there's an early position limp for $25. I bump it up to 100, small blind calls 100, and the under the gun limper makes the call as well. Three ways to 9, 8, deuce, two diamonds. Seems like a pretty safe board to me. My opponent's check to me, I bet out 150. Small blind snap calls 150 and the under the gun player calls as well. Turn card 8, which I think is a good card and potentially a bad card. It can be a good card here because it reduces the likelihood somebody flopped a set of 8s because making quads is pretty hard. However, my opponents could have called on the flop with second pair and now improved to trips. When they both check to me against these particular guys, I think I can definitely keep betting here. Get called by a lot of worse hands, so I throw out $500 this time. The small blind has $1,300 left in his stack and makes a very quick call. So I put him on maybe a 9x hand, a flush draw, a flush and straight draw, or maybe a hand like pocket 10s or pocket jacks. Under the gun player folds and we're heads up here to the river, which is a 3, a complete brick. None of the draws get there. Everything misses and when he checks to me, I'm going to go for it all here with my over pair. Seems like a pretty safe run out to me. I put out a bet of all in, all in for his last $850. The dealer announces all in for the rest of my opponent's stack and he doesn't snap fold right away, which is great. It means he should be having something here potentially to call with. He then tells me that the turn card killed him, which doesn't make too much sense to me. I'm then worried that maybe he's slow rolling me a little bit here. He might have an eight and thinks that I have a better eight or a full house. Maybe he has pocket deuces and thinks I have a hand like eight, nine. I'm a little bit worried, but after thinking for about a minute, I realize there's no way he has a full house or trips. He would make the call way quicker. He eventually throws in the chips for a call. We show the queens and they're good and he shows nine deuce suited for two pair on the flop and a counterfeit two pair on the turn. And we finally get lucky and win a massive one here. Our stack is over $7,000. 
Within the first two hours of our session, after two months of losing, getting bad beat and cooler, it finally feels good to get lucky and win a big pot. The next hand comes up about an hour later. We're playing 5, 10, 25. It folds to me on the button with ace nine offsuit. I raise to 75. The big blind makes a call and we're heads up to a pretty great board of nine, six, five. All clubs, we have top pair, top kicker, and the nut flush draw. Big blind checks. I throw out a $65 bet. And with around $800 in a stack, the big blind check raises me to $175. When the big blind check raises me on this board, he should have two pairs, straights, flushes, and sets, but he could also have some top pair holdings, some bluffs, or just some random air balls as well. Given the fact that it's a $25 straddle pot, he only has $800, which is roughly 30-ish big blinds. And for 30 big blinds with top pair, top kicker, and the nut flush draw, I'm just never going to get away from this hand. So instead of calling and seeing a club on the turn and maybe not getting the maximum from his two pairs, straights, and sets, I decided to just rip it all in. It's possible we could get called by worse 9x hands as well. He doesn't snap call right away, but eventually he does put in the call. So over $1,600 in the middle, the turn's a king, the river's a five, and he shows king five of diamonds for bottom pair on the flop and runner runner two pair into a full house on the river and our ace nine is cracked in a very odd odd way i'm not saying anything about his play because people can play however they want with their own money but jesus what is this run out i was over an 86 percent favorite to win this hand and these are the kind of hands that have been happening to me over the last two months i get it in as a massive favorite and then just somehow lose this is a pretty annoying one. Luckily, it was only around a $1,600 pot and we're still doing pretty good on the day. Can't do anything about a bad beat, just gotta keep playing. Next up here, I have pocket kings on the button. I raised it up to $75 and now this small blind who said he was from Alabama and watches my videos as well, re-raises me to $275. He's been playing pretty solid all day. I haven't seen him get out of line one time. He has around a $4,000 stack. The action's back over on me. Facing a 3-bet out of the small blind by a relatively tight player, we could call here in position or could put in a 4-bet. Let's say he is bluffing with a hand like ace-jack offsuit, maybe ace-queen, ace-10 suited, king-queen suited. We have those hands completely crushed. If he does have a hand like pocket 10s or jacks and I put in a 4-bet, he may find a hero fold against me. So I like to call here in position and go heads up to an 8-high board. Seems pretty safe to me and when he bets $250, our only option here is to call, which is what I do, turn 10 of hearts, and now he continues for a $600 bet. This $600 bet is a little bit worrisome here. We're facing a $600 bet from a relatively tight player who is out of position who 3-bet us preflop. We could now be losing to pocket 10s. We've been losing to pocket aces. It is possible he could be bluffing here with an ace x of hearts hand. I do think our only option is to call though the way we played our hand. Folding would just be way too tight and I think raising this $600 bet would be an overplay. So eventually after thinking for about 30 seconds I put in $600 and we're going to the river. A big sizable pot here with pocket kings and we see the queen of spades. I do not like this river at all. The main hand I thought he could have by three betting preflop, betting the flop and then continuing on the turn was pocket queens. And now we are losing to that hand. We're losing to aces. We're losing to queens now. We're losing to pocket tens on the turn. And now if he has pocket jacks, it's gonna be pretty hard to get value. If he jams all in or puts out a huge bet on this river, I actually think I could hero fold pocket kings. But luckily for us, he checks over to me. I highly doubt he's checking on this river card with a set or even a hand like pocket aces. However, pocket aces could be a check here on this river worried that I may have a set or to let me potentially bluff. He has around $2,400 left in his stack and the pot is roughly $2,300. I definitely think we should be putting out a bet here. Checking back would just be way too weak, but I don't want to bet too big. Let's say he has a hand like ace 10, maybe pocket jacks. I want to put out a bet that he can call with those hands. In order to get max value on the river against your opponent, you have to bet a sizing that they're able to call with worse hands. Let's say I go all in for his $2,300 stack with pocket kings here. It's pretty hard to get called by a worse hand when I go all in for a pot size bet. 
I think for a pot size bet, he'd be folding the 10x hand in pocket jacks or pocket nines, and we want him to call with those hands when we're holding pocket kings. So I settle on a $750 bet, and he looks pretty frustrated at first, but eventually he puts in the call. We show the kings, and they are good. We take down a massive pot here, over $8,000 sitting in front of us now. This session is much needed. Losing $10,000 in one week of poker and $14,000 in a month, we desperately needed some run good. And to book a win, moving into the second to last hand of the night here with pocket tens, I raise it up to $100 over a limp. The straddle makes the call and the limper makes the call as well. And we're going three ways to the flop. The board is queen, 10, four, all clubs. We make the second set of the day. Action checks to me. I bet 210 under the gun calls and under the gun plus one folds. Heads up to the king of spades on the turn. She checks and I continue for $500, hoping maybe she improved to two pair, maybe top pair like the king X with king X of clubs. She doesn't think for too long and calls $500. Looking for a brick river, which we get. It's the six of spades. She checks for a third time and with only about $1,500 left in her stack, with around a pot of $1,700, I think an all-in is the best bet here. We can get called by a top pair holding, two pair holdings, or maybe even a lower set like pocket fours. I rip it all in for her last $1,500 and she snap folds. We take down another one. Man, it feels good to run good. Over an $8,000 stack at a 510 game, making some sets, making some hands. Our big over pairs are holding. The chips are in our direction. Finally, things are turning around for us. I grab some racks. I'm about to leave before the last hand of the night here when I look down at pocket nines. Early position recreational player calls 25. I raise to 100 and he calls heads up to queen four, six with pocket nines with only one over card to the board. I continue for a $60 C bet and he calls turn King another over card to our pair. This time I decide to check back and we hit a set on the river with a nine. He checks for a third time. I throw out 200 and he folds and we take down the last pot of the night here, booking a massive win of over $4,000, very much needed. Finally a good day here at the poker table, booking a big win. All right guys, that is it for this one. Out here relaxing on the lake with little buddy Rogue. I'm pretty sure he sees a squirrel or something. He's been staring over there for like five minutes, but we booked a win, a $4,000 profit, much needed. July was the worst month I've ever had in poker, losing $14,000 now, that isn't that much with the stakes I'm playing, buying in for $2,500, but poker makes up like 70, 60, 70% of my yearly income. So to lose $20,000 over two months and not really make much money in other places and then pay for rent, car, gas, food, all these things, it was pretty rough. And I feel like the worst part was just losing day after day after day. I'm really competitive. I want to win. So to lose day after day, it just really got to me. I had to take a couple days off and I had to really look at my play and just think, what are we doing here? Like, what am I doing so wrong to lose this much money? There's nothing you can do when you get set up. When you get kings versus aces, set under set, flush under flush, full house under full house, there's nothing you can do. That's the bad variance of poker. That's when things are gonna go bad. But I made a ton of huge errors over the last two months. I made some bad folds, some bad calls. Pre-flop, my game was off, and I feel like it had a lot to do with the fact that I don't wanna be known as a nitty poker vlogger or the tightest poker vlogger. I wanna be able to give action to people. I want to be exciting as well. So I was experimenting with more three bets, four bets, more bluffs, trying to get in there with more speculative hands. And I do feel like it cost me. I called way too often this last two months. I was just a calling station. I would call every bet on the river and they basically had it every single time. So I was just losing money, losing money, paying off huge bets with like second pair or third pair. It cost me, it was just it was, it was really bad. So I had to look at myself, I had to change something, and I took a couple days off, and when I came in yesterday, 
and I played a session, I felt like I played very solid. I tried to really hone in on some of my pre-flop play as well, which I feel like was giving me some troubles, and tried not to punt, tried not to get out of line, and then today, we had a great session. We ran well, our hands held up, we didn't get out of line, we didn't punt, and I made $4,000. So, feels good. We still have a long way to go to get out of this crazy downswing, but we started it. $4,000 in the profit on Friday when this video actually Saturday when this video comes out I'm gonna be playing in the Seminole Hard Rock $5,300 main event tournament. It's the biggest tournament buy-in I've ever played in my entire life I'm super excited about it. There's probably gonna be a million plus dollars for first place So it could be a massive tournament for me, but that's gonna be the next vlog after this one Hopefully we can run deep. Hope you guys enjoyed this one If you did hit that like button comment down below and subscribe to the channel. New videos like this every single week. Until next time, I'll see ya.